your, to your house to get the load. And love to you. Thank you, Lord, for sending our pastor, Pastor Eric, Lord, to you. He's doing a wonderful job studying in this field, good Lord. And Lord, love to you. Give him more of a vision when he's preaching, Lord, that when he's preaching this morning, Sunday school, Lord. And I'd like to, again, bless uh, every, everyone in this church, members of the Presidency Assembly, Lord. I thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for the coming, Lord. Please, they don't come, Lord, just to, just for nothing, Lord, but they came, Lord, to have fellowship with you, Lord, and to sing and to glorify and to listen to your holy name, Lord. And I'd like to uh, lift up this Sunday school in your holy hands, Lord, in my soul, Jesus Christ, that I pray. Amen. Amen.
bless you. God bless you. Are you okay? Are you ready for Sunday school? Yes. Praise be to God. So let us just stand for the reading of the word. <coughs> Let us just read together in the book of John, John 1, John 17, verse 8. Let us read. Blessed be your wonderful name, Lord Jesus. Father, we come as we are to study this word of eternal life. Father, please come, Lord, and do it in our heart, Lord. Believe the word, Lord, in our heart yourself, Father. Because, Lord, as human beings, we don't have the capacity, Lord, to believe this eternal word. Father, help us, Lord. Bless this moment, Lord. Be the guide and be the help, Lord, in this time. We commit, Lord, everything in your holy hands. Bless the reading of your word. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. 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 You may be seated. God bless you. Amen. 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 Pastor John Claude, God bless you. Amen. So I say, so, is it your son? Yes. Oh, my. <laughs> I never see him. It's my first time to see him. So God bless you, my brother. Do you speak English? Yes. Oh, my. That's good then. <laughs> So I don't need anybody to translate that. That's good. Amen. God bless you once more. Mama, God bless you. Amen. Thank you. So uh, we're going to carry on with uh, our lesson as we spoke about the impersonation. Amen. Amen. Jesus said, I like this one. He said, I pray for them. Jesus speaking to the Father. Amen. Amen. Straight. Jesus was God himself, but he was speaking to God. Amen? Amen? As yourself, you are God, but you can speak also to God. Amen. But Abraham said that the God, the one Jesus was speaking to, was dwelling in him. Amen? Amen. Amen. God, his aim was to dwell in you and in me. But the sin made God to get out from human being. But the redemption brought God back in you and me. Jesus said, speaking to God, he said, I pray for them. Amen? Amen? Jesus prayed for us. So if Jesus prayed for you, that means your prayer is exhausted already. Amen? That means God, God can do anything else than accept Jesus' prayer. And I believe that when the Bible says, Jesus said he prayed for us, I believe it. Amen? That means if Jesus prayed for me, that means that God accepted me. But when I say that, there's nothing you can bring to God. You can't impersonate anything. The only thing God can accept is Christ. And Christ is the word. But when I say that, Catholic Church, they said, God will judge this earth with Catholic Church. And Protestant, they said, God will judge this earth with Protestant Church. Amen. But when I said, if God judges this world, with Protestant church, all the Catholics, they are lost. Amen? Amen? Let's say this. If God judges this earth with such so-called message churches, let's say, uh, uh, Simpson Tabernacle, Amen? Amen. Uh, let's say, Lex State Tabernacle is lost. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? Yeah. That's the reason why God doesn't have to do, doesn't have anything to do the churches. God deals with the individuals. Because in the churches you find so many church members. You find so many impersonators. Those who are coming to make themselves, themselves Christians only on Sunday. In Sunday, uh, on Sunday. Do you understand? But God is not looking for something like that. God is not looking for a big church, but God is looking for the true believers. Amen? God is looking for the quality. But I'm going to say that God doesn't count his church. 
God went to his jobs. God is looking for the quality. Amen. Not for the number. Amen. The quality. Because God wants to deal with the individual. But so many people, even Satan, they do not have the best place for Satan to hide himself is in the church. Amen. Amen. You find it's hard to find Satan in the church than to find Satan in the nightclub. When you go, if you get in the nightclub, straight away you know that this is the Satan's temple. Amen. Amen. That one is not a big problem. But when Satan is hiding himself among the believers, Amen. that's the very dangerous thing. Amen. How do you know that you know that? For you to know who is Satan, who is the child of God, you must stick on the word of God. Amen. Just put the word of God. But I'm saying that Satan will do everything. Amen. Amen. Satan can impersonate everything. But Satan will never impersonate love. <laughs> because why? Because in his heart, there's no love. So the impersonation is Satan in the church making himself church member. Are you free? So when you come, but I'm saying that doesn't matter the way you shout hallelujahs, the way you sing, the way you jump, that one doesn't make you Christian. I believe in jumping, I believe in shouting, I believe in singing. It's good. But that, those ones, they are not going to make you Christian. A true believer is that the, uh, the one who has got the self-contact with God. So most of the churches today, they are not trying to connect people to God. They are connecting people to the churches. Until people, they believe, they believe the pastor more than the prophet. Mm. Amen. Amen. The only person we have to believe without reasoning is Brother Amen. 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 The rest of us read the message, mm. check the message, Amen. and say, Brother Eric, mm. is it what Brother said you are saying there? Mm. Amen? Amen. That's what we have to do. Because we have so many impersonators, not only on the chair there, but also in the pulpit. Mm. Amen. Don't think that every pastor, they are pastors. Mm. Satan is a preacher. Mm. I'll prove it to you. Okay. But a man said that the first preacher who preached Eve, who was it? The serpent. The serpent. Mm. But a man said that he came to preach to Eve. And but Abraham said the same serpent still preaching today. Mm. And the serpent takes the form ah, of the day. Mm. If today we read this one, that's when the serpent also has got the title. Mm. And nice shoes. Mm. Nice shoes, poly shoes, you could stand, you could stand here and preach the word of God. And some of them will tell you that, oh, you know, it was a mistake to believe that only Barabanam. No, it's not only Barabanam. Jesus first mm. is a total lie. Mm. You never ever know Jesus outside of Parapara. Mm. Amen? Amen? Because Jesus showed himself in each age. Mm. Amen? Amen? This is the church ages. Alright? Yes. And this one is Jesus. <laughs> but the Bible said that Jesus was in the midst of the candlestick. And all the messengers here, all of them, amen? amen? All of them was Jesus. We had Paul, we had Irenaeus, we had, who was that? Uh, Martin, Columba, uh, Luther, Wesley, and Barabana. Okay. But all of them, they were Jesus. Do you understand? So the same Jesus came to spread himself in the seven church ages. So in this age, when you're looking for Jesus, is Paul. In this age, looking for Jesus is Barabana. So how can you accept Jesus by rejecting Barabana? It's not possible. Rejecting Barabana is rejecting Jesus. Amen. Rejecting Samuel, it was rejecting who? Samuel. 
Uh, Samuel is rejecting who? Jehovah. Do you understand? So if you see those impersonations, when they come on the pulpit, so many message preachers today, the backslid, they say that it was a mistake to put Barabana in your front. <laughs> Amen. Most God told Moses told Joshua. He said, Joshua, my servant, stay right on what Moses, my prophet, what? God himself advising Joshua. He said, Joshua, stick on Moses' message. Don't try to go to get away from the Moses' message. That's the way God works. If God wants to tell you something today, he's going to tell you, stay right with Brother Balaam's message. God doesn't have any other message to give you. If you say, God, Father, uh, can you give me another message? He's going to tell you, no, I don't have any message for you. I'll send the message with the messenger. So the only way for you to get God's message is to get this messenger here. So many preachers today, so-called uh, message uh, preachers, they said, no, today, you know, uh, it's not about Barabana, it's about Jesus. Lies. Amen? Because Jesus came through the message. Because Barabana said that the message is Jesus Christ himself. So, what they are trying to do, they are trying to push people away, uh, to get people away from the message from Barabana. Amen? Amen. That means they are taking people away from Jesus. But I'm saying it's not saying the name of Jesus which make you a Christian. No. But you need to accept or to receive the word of saint. Amen. Amen. Do you understand? Amen. Jesus said, if you are my children, you receive me. How do you say that you are the children of Abraham and you are rejecting me? You are even looking to stone me. Because I said, when as your father Abraham saw my day, he rejoiced. They said, we have the father, Abraham. Jesus said, your father is not Abraham. Because your father, Abraham, he saw my day recognized. What about you? You are, your father is what? The devil. Amen. Amen. Those one was doing the impersonation. But Jesus is saying that, I'm not praying for the world. Are you with me? Yeah. I pray not for the world. So don't expect everyone in the city to believe the message like you. Because Jesus didn't pray for them. <laughs> Amen. But for what? For them which thou hast given me. So before, but I'm said that in no time a man can seek for God. God is the one who is calling people. If you believe the message today, it's because God called you. Amen. Don't say that, oh, I believe the message, I came to the message. No, the message came to you. Mm. <laughs> Amen. Because the message went to everybody. So many people rejected it. But you, you accept it. Why? Because God called you. If God called you, then Jesus prayed for you. Because Jesus didn't pray for all the world. He prayed for those one was called by God. You understand? And Jesus said, why? He said, for their time. And all mine are time. Are yours. And yours are mine. And I am what? Glorified in them. So if you see this one, you understand that Jesus and God was the same person. And today, Jesus and the bride, we are the same person. But I'm saying that God blended himself. Yeah? yeah. In the bride. God with the bride, they blended himself together. What that means? Do you know what the, the blender is? Yeah? What is the blender? A mix. You understand? So you take the blender, you put the ginger inside. <laughs> Amen. You put the lemon and the honey. <laughs> Amen. And you make the juice. You understand? 
So in that juice, you've got everything inside. You've got the lemon, you've got the ginger, you've got what? The honey. And this one is a medicine. Do you understand? But inside there, you don't see the lemon anymore. You don't see the, uh, the ginger, you don't see the honey. They are both together. That's what means to blend something, to mix. So the bread now and Christ, they are mixed. Are you familiar? That the other way Jesus said, the world will see me no more. So if you take that, you say, okay, show me the, the ginger. There's no ginger. Show me the uh, lemon. There's no lemon. Show me the honey. There's no honey. They're all blended together. They become one. Amen? That's the reason why people today, we, they will never see Jesus because Jesus became you and me. Mm. Jesus was right when he said that. No one can say it. Amen. Remember what we spoke in the book of Acts chapter 19? Can you remember again? Those guys there, they went to imitate. Yeah? So, but I want to say that I like when I do something, when I want to do something, I want to know that God is with me. Amen. He said, if God tells me that Abraham Lincoln is going to resurrect. He said, I'm going to gather everybody to come and see. Because I know that God is with me. If Moses was so sure, because God was with him. But these people here, they wasn't sure if they, they were with God. Amen? They saw people casting out devils. They saw Peter or the disciples casting out devils. They said, oh, come on, we can do it too. Amen? Listen, in the church, you can hide yourself. Amen? Yeah. You can hide yourself. But when things are going to happen, in that time, the devil will know who you are. You know, Barabana was a righteous man. Yes? Yeah. One day, he had trouble, he had trouble with the tax man. And it was too much for him. Amen? And one day, the tax man called, it was the, the lawyer, called on the phone. And Barabban didn't want to speak to him. When he heard the phone call, he got outside. And Sister Mida picked up the phone. Can I speak to Billy? Barabban said, I tell him I'm not here. Listen, only that, that one. I'm not here. Say, yeah, my husband is not here. Amen? Amen. And Sister Mida, oh, I like Sister Mida. Praise be to God. Amen. That woman was designed to be the prophet's wife. Amen. Amen. It's not for everyone. She was a special woman. Amen. Amen. That's why, if you have a child, call that child Mida. Sister Mena came to Barabana. She said, Billy, do you think that one was the best thing to do? She said, honey, I wasn't in the house. I was outside. <laughs> she said, no, you got out of the house. Actually, he told a lie. It was just a small thing, isn't it? <laughs> that one separated Barabana. Say, oh, darling, I'm sorry. Next time, I'll never do it anymore. And one day, Barabana was called to go and pray for a child. When Barabana was trying to pray for the child, but God said, take out your dirty hands from the child. Go and fix what you've done. Oh, praise God. You know, that man was a special man. I feel. No, the thing is, we don't know what sin can do. Sin, let's say, sin separates you from God. Amen? Amen. What, what can I say? You know, what is sin? Let, let, us, let me make it clear. What is sin? Sin is like this one. Do you understand? This is the power. Because God is your power. Okay? 
With God, we've got power. We've got, it's not because this one has got a battery. Let's say there's no battery here. Or a television. Before to watch anything on the TV, you have to plug it. This is the power. This is God. And this is the believer. So, as long as there's no nothing between you and God, are you with me? You are plugged. And you've got power. Satan will never touch you. Amen? If you do something wrong, those ones, they are the laws. Do you understand? You can't go way around. If you want to be powerless, unplug yourself. This is sin. So, but Abraham was like this. He went to pray for the child. And the devil knew that. And God himself, I appreciate that God himself rebuked his prophet. He said, William Barnum, get out your dirty hand from the child. Go and fix what you did. And William Barnum went back to the lawyer. He said, Mister, I'm so sorry about what I did. I said, Mr. Barnum, what have you done? As far as I know, you've done nothing. He said, no, I was a sinner. When you called last time, I made my wife to lie, to tell you that I wasn't there. Are you familiar? Yeah. I told my wife to lie, to tell you that I'm not here. But I was there. The reason why I'm calling you because I want to fix it, I want to make it right. And the lawyer told what Abraham said, Billy, I only trust in you. But from now, I trust you more. Mm. Amen? Yeah. Be honest. Stay proud to the power. Don't let anything wrong come in your life. If you have something in your life, you are unplugged, you are coming to the church, you are just doing the impersonation. You are not really planned with the Lord. Amen. Until you be planned. And you can see, you can come in my house. For example, you see the, the TV is, is off, switch off. Yeah? The only way to know if the TV is plugged, you must switch it on. Do you understand? As long as it's off, no one will notice. You take the TV which is plugged, which is off. And the TV, which is unplugged of the look, the same thing. Amen? Yeah. But when it's going to come the time to switch them on, that the place you're going to know which one is plugged and which one is unplugged. Mm -hmm. That's what happened with the believers. Yeah. That TV unplugged is the impersonation. Mm -hmm. and whatever, how beautiful it looks like, but you don't have the need of it because it's not going to serve you. Maybe it's broken. Do you understand? This one, even if it's not a nice TV, but as long as it's working, you need this one. Do yes. you understand? Yes. Both one, they are TVs. Both one, off. Both one. One is plugged, one is unplugged. So, in the church, we are all the same. Amen? Amen. We shout hallelujahs. We pray. We sing. That's fine. But don't be unplugged. Because your power is only from God. As long as you are not sincere with God, you are wasting your time. <laughs> Amen. You are not different from those people on Saturday going to the nightclub. You are exactly the same as them. You know, Jesus is the light. Amen. Amen. This house with full of Jesus is the house of light. Amen. Amen. So if you get the light out, the darkness will be here. It will come just like a night club. <laughs> I speak. So a church without Christ is a night club. I'm telling you. That's the reason why my mom said that there was three cartoons. Okay? I'm getting so many subjects there. I'll try to Maybe short, yeah. Three cartoons, okay? Number one was the cartoon of okay, 
tell me. <laughs> but Israel, have you read this one before? Three cartons. I start from the bottom. Number three was the purple. Erica, can you remember? The purple cartons. Number two was the iron cotton. Pastor Shankar is a specialist on this one. <laughs> <laughs> and number one, this one was the civilization. Cares of life. Okay? And this one was what? The religion. To be honest, I forget number one. Who can help me? What are official? Can you help me, please? Uh, free cartons, the toilet. You know the poop, you know the fair. You know the bamboo. Yeah. Bamboo cartons. Yeah? Is it? Yeah. China. Okay. It was China. What I want to show you is this one. But I'm going to say that this one, the iron curtain was no civilization. Civilization is here in China. This one was uh, Russia. Okay? You know, to get a message in Russia is very hard. Do you know that? Because it's the iron curtain. Bamboo curtain is China, the civilization. But I'm going to say that cares of life. We care about life too much, and then we can't get it. Because he said, this one is the curtain. People they can't go beyond. He said, but this one, number three, number three was the very dangerous curtain. The purple curtain, he said, is a religion. He said, because it, when someone gets here, the person thinks that he's a child of God now or he's a Christian. But the Bible said that it's just impersonality and Christianity. There's nothing with him. Do you understand? And when someone gets here, it's hard to get him out of this place. What I'm talking about this one is not only Catholic church, even message churches. So they get people in this curtain here, they can't get out from that place. Do you understand? So they believe more their pastors than the prophets. Not knowing that the prophet is the only one, the one who was sent to bring the mind of God to the people. They are stuck in there, the religion curtain. And this one is a very, very dangerous religion, uh, culture. Now, when you go now, you get in time of trouble, start now looking for God. Those guys here, they were standing before that guy, they said, in the name of the Lord Jesus, the one who was put in by Paul, get out from this man. They said, we know Paul. We know Jesus. Who are you? But I want to say that you can Hide yourself from us, but you can't hide yourself from the devil. Because the devil knows who you are. And God also knows. Amen? Amen. In time, when everything is, is okay, that's fine. But when you get in trouble, you found out. So it's better for you to be sincere with God. If you are a Christian, be Christian. But the Bible said that the Laodicean church age was lukewarm. And it was putative. From the mouth of God. Do you understand? Listen to Baba. Praise be to God. I read this one last time. But I'm saying so many people try to put on a Christian face or a Christian phone on what? On Sunday. And on Monday, you should see the kind of faith, face they got on. Impersonation. So you can't be someone else here on Sunday and someone else on Monday in, in, the, in school. Amen. So the reason why you are connected to God because you have to take light, your light to the darkness. So you are the ambassador or you are the representation of Jesus among the unbelievers. That's the job. This message didn't, but uh, God didn't send this message 
to make people church members. No. God wanted to reflect himself in the believers. That's the reason why he sent Barabana, not to make churches. But I want to say that I never, ever had a mind to start a denomination. Or to pull people to come to my assembly, to my church. So he said, I've got only one aim, is to pull people, to put people in contact with God. Amen. So the people, they will become the new creature in Christ Jesus. Do you understand? That's the power. That's the, the only way you can be proud. Because our power comes from God. Outside of God, there's no power. <laughs> Do you understand? If you are Christian, uh, but I'm saying that all the power which called the world in existence is dwelling now in human being. Do you believe it? That means the Lord Jesus. Amen. The great Jehovah, the one who was creating, now he came down to live in you and me. But the thing is why we are powerless is because we are unplugged. That's the main thing. So now, as I said, impersonation. But I'm saying that when you start preaching the word of God, check your motives and your objectives. Why are you preaching? I told so many brothers said, if you are preaching to get to, to, to look for money, mm. start a business. Mm. I always say that the best way to find money is in the business, mm. not in the church. I don't believe in that. If I can't connect people to God, that means even myself, I'm wasting my time. Mm. That's the reason why I always say that I'm not a policeman. I'm not. I, I don't have to follow people to tell them what to do. Mm. Amen. Mm. But. I'm trying to give you guys the word of God for you to be connected to God until you be powerful. Amen? And the devil will be afraid of you. As I said last time, Jesus was a powerful man. He was a short man, but so powerful. But Abraham said that a man is not how many muscles you've got, how big muscles you've got. You know, something happened to America. A basketball player, a legend, died on a helicopter crash. Amen? Amen. That man had millions of pounds, of dollars. He was a rich man. He went to play basket with his daughter and the helicopter crashed. Do you understand? Yeah. The end of life. Is it the end? No. It's not the beginning. It depends which God did you serve. What I want to say here is that I saw one of the basket players, a big man, his name is Shaquille O'Neal. He's a very big muscle man. He was giving a testimony. He was in tears. I said, oh God. Even his muscles was unable to help Kobe Bryant to come back in life. And understand that man is not about muscles. Man is about how much God you have in you. Yeah. Make sure that you've got God. But the Bible said that show me that church which is humble toward God. I'll show you the powerful church. If we don't have power here, it's a waste of time. Amen. Sometimes trouble will come. Remember last time we had Brother just was in the hospital. It was a trial. But by the grace of God, we overcame. When we are here, sickness can come. As long as we are not connected to God, we get in trouble. Believe me. <laughs> Amen? Big man, big muscles man, was on tears. He was unable to bring that man back. And that reality is standing there for everyone. Amen? Amen. As I said, Joseph prospered. I believe in prosperity. Amen? Joseph prospered in the prison. But Joseph also was blessed to become 
to sit beside the king. He was blessed down. Amen. Be blessed here, but never forget God. Amen. Stay connected with God. My man said, and on Monday, you should see the kind of face they got on. But now, that's impersonation, which is nothing in the world in my book, but hypocrite, exactly. You have so many of them. I saw, oh, pray, oh God. You know, when I see some kinds of things happening in the church, I feel like vomiting. A pastor went to preach. He preached a wonderful sermon. Oh, God help me to never be like that. He preached a wonderful sermon. He was invited. And the pastor of the church came to say, Oh, we are preaching on a brother. He's a powerful brother. Oh, thank you for this gift. Oh, let us clap hands for him. Grace be to God. And after the meeting, he went to see some brother and said, that, You see what he's been preaching there? It's not the message. So, why did you say that on the pulpit there? Hypocrite. Impersonation. I'll let someone, if you don't appreciate what you're preaching, stay quiet. Do you understand? We have, what I'm, I'm trying to, to tell you is to show you that we have impersonation on the pulpit. So you must be very careful. Stay with the message. Read the message by yourself. Do you understand? It's very, very important, guys. Hmm. But the man said, in the message, things that have to be. I still have time. But I know I've got to stand with you, Yonder. Get away from the things of the world. And if here is something in you that you still want to act the way you act, if you do have the things of the world in you, he said, remember what? You are none of God's. Are you familiar? That means you are not of God. You are just what? A church member. Until that call. That deep calling to the deep. God must call you. Like Moses. Moses met God in the burning bush. You see here, this is the best church. God himself a preacher speaking to his prophet. Now, the only one can speak to you, can bring the word of God to you, is this man here. Be why? Because he has met God. So, this man has got the mind of God. But a man said that a true believer must have that experience. Not only the Bible bush, but meet God himself. Who is God? God is the word of God. So, you never meet God if you don't read his word. Are you familiar? Because Moses, before to meet this one, Moses was a normal man. Mm -hmm. But he had a call. He was born to be a prophet, to be a deliverer. Mm -hmm. But after meeting the pillar of fire, when Moses came from there, he was a powerful man. Do you know why? Because after meeting the pillar in the burning bush, Moses was plugged. Do you understand? And he became powerful. That the reason why Moses could stand before the Red Sea and open the seas. Amen. Amen. God is unlimited God. So when people go there, they say, what is going to happen? Is, is it God is going to build a bridge? What's going to happen? Because Pharaoh is coming. What's going to happen? But Moses made the pillar of fire. Moses was plugged from God since the burning bush. And Moses wasn't afraid about anything. He told them, why are you shouting? Why? Do you forget all the powers of God? Do you think God is unable to help us in this situation? So Moses will understand. But Moses, look, that's, this is the sea. <laughs> you see how big is the sea? Moses, maybe you don't realize. The sea is big. See, we, we don't even see the, to the other side. What's going to happen? But Moses could say, it's not my business. God told me to take the children of Israel out. So that means God is responsible for everything. Be not afraid. Stay calm. God is good. No, Moses. Moses was plucked. 
Because Moses met God in this, his, this church, the best church ever. Where God comes himself, speak to his people. Paul was a church member, isn't he? Yeah. He was a Jew. He used to go to the synagogue years and years and years and years. Since that time, Paul was impersonating. He wasn't a believer yet. He had and the knowledge of the scriptures, but he wasn't a believer yet. Oh, praise God. But Abraham said, knowing the scripture doesn't give you eternal life. But knowing him is what is eternal life. Once you meet that God, that's the place you get your power from. If you are reading the word of God. If you are meditating upon the word of God, God will always come. He's going to meet you. But if you give your time for something else, forget about God. So, now Paul here was getting out from the impersonation to a true believer. How long does it take him? Only a couple of seconds. He changed. Moses here, but I want to say that Three minutes, something like that. His life was changed. Amen. Paul was in the church years and years. But he was a church member. But once he met this one, his life changed. Now, he's supposed to tell those people, listen, everything we're doing here is impersonation. That man we killed there, Jesus, is the Messiah. And those impersonators, they became enemy to him. That's the thing. Once you meet God, those impersonators, they will become your enemy. But you must make sure that you are plugged. Because if you are unplugged, your enemy will finish with you. Hmm. Oh, God. Listen, I'm closing. Now, while we are all in prayer, every Christian is there. How many is in here tonight that would raise up your hands to God? Not to me. And by that say, God, make me in my heart. I accept Christ, the conqueror. Amen? Amen? Do you know what is the power? The power is to conquer yourself. Do you know that the best sermon ever preached is when God is preaching you from your heart? Listen, uh, for example, I want to touch this one. A voice inside of me tell me, no, don't touch it. Do you understand? You can't argue. But if someone tells you, don't touch it, so why? <laughs> That's the first question. Why? But if you tell yourself, you listen to yourself more than you listen to someone else. Is it true? Yeah. Is it true, Mother Jess? That's the reason why God, you must have much God in you for God to speak to you from your own heart. That the way you become sincere with God, you quit the impersonation to become a true Christian. Is it true? Listen. He said, I accept Christ, the conqueror, I am a sinner. As long as you are unable to conquer yourself, amen? That means you're still a sinner. You understand? You can't come to church. You are just impersonating. Until you start preaching yourself. Say, mm -mm, what you are doing is no good. Leave it. No brother Eric. Mm -mm. I'm not a policeman. You are the police of yourself. You are responsible of your own life. Amen? If you want to talk to someone, no, no, I'm not going to do it. I have a question. You put yourself in that standard. And not only that, but love the word of God. Read it. Amen? Let the word of God give you a form to mold you. Amen? That's what is changing. It's going to change your life. Say, I need Christ. I can't conquer myself, try to quit smoking. So, no, you do smoke. You can quit smoking because we have the electronic cigarette. 
is going to kill you more. Yeah. <laughs> Impersonation. The best way to stay away from the smoke is to quit. Is it true? Yeah. Simple and easy. You know, those people, they are doing business. They don't care about your life. Oh, these people, they want to quit, but they can't. Amen. The best uh, medicine to give someone to quit smoking is the word of God. Amen. Amen. So, they want to quit smoking, but they don't want the word of God. So, Satan is, is smart. He said, okay, let us make money from that. Say, okay, you can quit smoking. We give you the electronic cigarette. We even make the flavor. <laughs> can you imagine? Who, who can, uh, can imagine a long time ago that people will be smoking a cigarette with the flavor of strawberry? I don't know how it tastes, but it's rubbish. And that cigarette is the impersonation, and you have more smoke on it than a normal cigarette. Do you know that? <laughs> and believe that it make more noise. I saw churches like that. People everywhere. Brother, I'm sorry. But straight away, I'll tell you God is not there. God in simplicity. I spoke about Brother Barham here with Tommy Osborne. Tommy Osborne said, we prepare ourselves to make noise to cast out the devil. He said, Brother Barham took the child quietly. He said, audience. Open your eyes, the child is healed. He said, What? <laughs> you know, but I'm saying that if you want to cast out devils, you don't have to shout. No, no, no. <laughs> no uh, listen, don't waste your time. Don't waste your energy for nothing. As long as you are unplanned, whatever the way you're going to shout, the devil will be there watching you. So you finish. So when are you going to finish? It's going to do like those guys there. <laughs> Praise be to God. The thing is that the people, they don't want to conquer themselves. Try to quit smoking. I couldn't do it. I tried to quit lying. How can you quit lying? If not, it's not the word of God, it's not possible. Hmm. Are you for me, possible? Amen? He said, I tried to quit playing the part of hypocrite. I couldn't do it. But I, I go to church. My mother went to church. Amen? Amen? Your mothers went to church? Yes? Your dad went to church? Yes. So your dad, your parents are bringing you to church, isn't it? Yes. Uh, yeah? Yes. Don't stay in that standard. But Abraham, as I always say that, but Abraham is not your daddy's prophet. Are you with me? Yeah. But Abraham is not your mom's prophet. But Abraham is your own prophet. Mm -hmm. Don't say that we don't wear trousers because uh, uh, the message we believe. Say, no, I don't wear trousers because I'm, 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 I'm a believer. It's not because what Abraham said. Because I understand what Abraham said. That's the reason why I don't. Make Barabaram to be your own prophet, not your parent prophet. It's not because my, my, parent, my parent was going to the church and me too, I'm a Christian. No. Until then, you stay in personality. Praise be to God. My mother went to church. She taught me I should go. But as yet, I've never come to that place. Is it true? Conquer yourself. Two more quotes and I'll close. You know people want power. And really they don't know what power is. I told you about this one. What is the power? The power is when Moses met the pillar of fire. Isn't it? This is the power. This is the electricity. This is the power of creation. If Barbara created the squirrels, it's because of this one. Do you, do you understand? And the devil, Satan will never stand before this power. What is this? This power is the word of God. It's what we call the word, the laws. And this word was in Moses, and they wrote the Bible 
according to what God did in Moses. And we call it the word of God. But in reality, the word of God is this one. The pit of fire, the logos, that's what is the word. And your power comes from there. So many people, they don't know what power is. But I want to say it. They don't know what power is. See? They don't really know what goes with it. The way up what is down. And the way down is what? Up. Try to go up. More you go up, <laughs> more you get in trouble. Amen? Do you know, if, if you fall from here, you're not going to break your surface name. But if you go there and there, <laughs> That's the way you break yourself. Don't try to go up. Go down. And God will take you up. Praise be to God. If you want power, see how humble you can get. A child of God is an humble man. Isn't it? But it doesn't mean that... Mm -mm, I'm not talking about this one. But I'm saying that this one makes you hypocrite. Do you understand? But... The humbleness is to humble yourself before the word of God. Amen. When Brother Abraham says something, you say, Amen. That's what I'm talking about. Amen. <laughs> because if you take it in that way, the Pope will be the humblest man in this planet. Mm -hmm. Have you seen the Pope? He doesn't wear trousers mm -hmm. on the road. Is it too much? I saw the wicked person they are like this. But wickedness in their heart. When you bring the word of God to them, say, no, 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 don't believe this. What? But Abraham said that the word of God is not a buffet. You choose what you want. No, you take everything. Are you with me? Even if I don't understand it, I say, I say, amen. You need to be humble. That's the power. But Abraham was humble. Until Abraham was rejected from all the churches. They said, Billy, we don't, Billy started, when he started, he was okay. But now he's trying to make himself God. No, he wasn't trying to make himself God. He was God. You say amen on that? Yeah. You are not trying to make yourself God. You are God. Otherwise, Jesus will never call you. The deep calling to the deep. There must be a deep to respond to the other deep. If God calls you, that means you are yourself what? God. You must be, you must have this nature for him to call you. Otherwise, he will never call you. So many people they started uh, telling Brother Barham that he was trying to make himself God. And Brother Barham was with God. And everything those people was saying, it wasn't Brother Barham's business. That's what we call the harmonious. Sometimes when you are humble, people say that you are not. It's not what people say, it's what God says. And then you've got more power than what? Just get away from all your worldly thing, thinking. You understand? And humble yourself before what? God. And then you've got more power than the man that runs all over the building and makes a big lot of noise. See, remember, because you have been what able to conquer yourself. But Abraham said that the enemy of William Banner is what yes. William Banner himself. Who's Banner Jesse's enemy? Yourself. Who's Banner Eric's enemy? Banner Eric. So I have to fight against myself every day. Me, I don't have an enemy except Banner Eric. Amen. And commit yourself to Christ. You see, to humble yourself before him. That's really power. You see the power? What is that? To humble yourself before God. My last one. Then I'll close. But let me say that. You show me a church that's humble. Which can, can believe the word of God. Isn't it? Read 
humble, not an arrogancy, a church just a sweet, humble church. I will show you a church that has the favor and power of God in it. So, but the Bible didn't say that 15,000 members, 25,000 members. He said the church could humble itself before God. It's the most, the more powerful church. As long as we can humble ourselves to God, get away the impersonation, we have power in this place. Amen. Amen. When the devil will come here to divide us, the devil will see the fire. It's not what the Pentecostal people say, fire! No, it's not about that. The fire is the word of God. As long as you keep the word of God in your heart, you are humble toward God, that fire will make the devil to run away. You don't have to shout fire. Just remain in the word of God. That power will make the devil to run away from you. Praise be to God. God bless you. Any question, my friends? Any question, guys? No? What's the name? Are you okay? Yeah. Good. You don't have a question? No? You understand everything, yeah? Yeah? Jafet, any question? I'm going to ask you a question now. What is the power? Who can tell me what is the power? Sister Bonham. Sister Bonham. It's when you have a connection. Thank you. Praise God. When you are, you have connection with God. And when you can humble yourself before God. That's the power. Praise be to God. What is the impersonation? Hmm? Imitation. Thank you very much. Praise be to God. <clears throat> oh, how I love Jesus.
Okay. <laughs> That's true. But I just said, can you pay again? With the microphone, please. <laughs> so I request. Person Father, I thank you for you giving us everyone here today, Lord. I thank you for for healing everyone who have been sick throughout their lives. Amen. Um, and I thank you for for um, for setting all the people free mm -hmm. here who, who who have been sick or who have been locked in prisons or hospitals for a very long time. Amen. Lord, uh, I, I bless the main service in the holy hands, Lord. Yes, God. And bless everyone, Lord, and and I give them a happy future in their lives. Amen. Amen. Okay. Thank you very much. Amen. So uh, I want to say that Sunday school is for you guys. You see, your parents there, they are just there because Brother Bram said that uh, go with your children to the Sunday school. But normally this Sunday school is yours. Do you understand? So you must expect to pray after the service of Sunday school. Yeah, I want to make it yours. It's not because they are, they are there. It's not their uh, service. It's your special service. Do you understand? That's the reason why I always ask you if you have questions. I want to make sure that you understand everything. Yeah, because in Sunday school I'm focusing more in you. Do you understand? So when it's time to sing, you guys, you sing. Do you understand? You sing, you clap your hands, and be ready to pray. I can choose anyone. Are you with me? It's your Sunday school. Remember, it's your Sunday school. Amen. God bless you. Go for a break, 10 minutes, and come back. God bless you.